stand up for prayer let us pray loving and gracious God we recognize and acknowledge you this morning as a King of Kings and Lord of Lords we give thanks and praise that we are children of the King and as we worship and celebrate this day uh, Jesus the King we pray Lord that our worship would indeed be filled and led by your spirit we give thanks for another opportunity to gather to fellowship we pray for refreshment we pray for renewal send forth yet again your Holy Spirit to lead and to guide and grant us always the grace and the courage to follow where you lead in the name of Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. Amen. The intro hymn from our mission praise, mission praise number 13, 1, 3. Yes, yeah, we're going to pause there. And then we're going to pause there. Oh, 
Welcome to any and all visitors sharing with us this morning, and we acknowledge our sisters and brothers sharing via live stream. Today we celebrate as Christ the King Sunday, the reign of Christ. It is the last Sunday in the church's year, last Sunday of year A. We give God thanks for having brought us through this year of Mother Church. Our readings and collect are for Christ the King, and our collect is on page 181. Proper 29 on page 181. We can mark that page and we return to it shortly. Our worship continues now in our prayer books, page 100, page 100. We use the last two sentences on that page. We recite the sentences together. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. 
grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We sing now our song of praise, number 759, 759, in the mission of praise, mission praise, 759. Please be seated. 
for the ministry of the word. The first reading is taken from Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 11 to 16, and verses 20 to 24. For thus says the Lord God, Indeed, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock on the day he is among his scattered sheep, so will I seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the peoples, and gather them from the countries, and will bring them to their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, in the valleys and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in good pasture, and their foes shall be on the high mountains of Israel. There they shall lie, there they shall lie down in a good fold and feed in rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek what was lost, and bring back what was driven away, bind up the broken, and strengthen what was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong, and feed them in judgment. Therefore thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I myself will judge between the fat and the lean sheep, because you have pushed with side and shoulder, butted all the weak ones with your horns, and scattered them abroad. Therefore I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be a prey, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will establish one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, my servant David. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Psalm appointed, Psalm 95, Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7. Page 593, page 593. Come. Let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his, to his voice. Shall we stand for the glory of Patrick? Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. reading from the Word of God, written in St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. 
I have heard your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for his re this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for, for you as I remember you in my prayer. I pray that God, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and well revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know that you may know what is hope to give in his calling to you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the measurable greatness of his power for his for his power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the heavenly places. For above all rule and authority and power and dominion and, glo and above every name that is named, not only in the age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things on his feet and has made him the head of all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. The gradual hymn from the mission praise, number 713, 730. According to Matthew, the 25th chapter, beginning at the 31st verse. Glory to Christ, our Savior. 
Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you, from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison? and did not take care of you. Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Open our ears, Lord. Help us to hear Jesus. Open our hearts, Lord, that we will receive Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. So, are we joyful today? Yes? Now, when we hear about the 31st of December, everybody's buzzing. We feel alive. God has brought us to the end of the year and we're looking forward to a new year. Well, this is the end of the church's year A. And we're looking forward to starting year B. So, it should be a joyous occasion. And added to that, 
Mother Church has chosen to designate the last Sunday of the year. Every, every year, every time the cycle goes around, last Sunday, we celebrate Jesus as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That calls for celebration. King. So, as we reflect on Jesus, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we have a very uh, um, interesting text in our gospel. Familiar to us, I'm sure. Sheep and goats being separated. And we hear Jesus giving that um, sort of a bit of judgment. Those who are commended and those who are condemned. Now, Jesus' words are very specific, very pointed. He says to one group, the group on his right, when I was hungry, when I was thirsty, when I was sick, in prison, naked, you took care of me, food and water and visiting and the whole rest of it. And they said, well, when? And he says, when you did it to the least, when you did it to the least, those we tend to regard as not being as good as us, the least, the disenfranchised, the poor, the downtrodden, the rejected, the scorned, the despised, and the whole rest of it. He says, when we did it to those persons, we were doing it to him. And then on the opposite side, the converse is true. He says to them, when I was hungry, thirsty, naked, sick, in prison, and the rest of it, you did not. And they ask, Similarly, when? And he says, when you didn't do it to the least, you did not do it to me. So, the gospel message raises up, this text raises up what we call very seriously the mission of the church. What is our mission? Our mission is to make Christ known in the simplest of, of, of um, answers. To make Christ known to the world. And he's saying to us in these very basic acts of service, we have failed. Well, there's one group who have failed to carry out the mission. So, mission is before us this morning. Our calling from God, not just to be here on a Sunday morning, but we have so much more time between Monday to Saturday. So what we do here is just a small, small act of worship and adoration and praise and thanksgiving to God and all of that. So much more for us to do Monday to Saturday. Our calling, our mission. The challenge, as Jesus presents it, is that we are called to serve, and especially serve, the least among us. And that is exactly where the challenge um, lies. For that is that it is on that score that sheep and goats were separated. Those who are able to serve the least within their midst, among them. So we, it begs the question, and we ask the question, so who are the least among us today? It's easy for us to talk about um, people have no jobs, we're in a pandemic, or people are on reduced hours, so we know there are persons who are struggling. And uh, last Sunday we did a good job in bringing out um, our gifts of food, produce, canned stuff, dry food items and so on and I can probably preempt our notices here and say well done we did very well uh, the plan was to um, put together 24 packages and uh, we were able to do 30 packages and the packages were even um, healthier than what we did the last time around there were much more substantial packages 
which means you did a very good job. So we can give ourselves a pat on the back as it were. So if we, if we maybe want to try and use this as a criteria, we can say we give ourselves a tip for feeding and supplying drink for the thirsty. So we come to an interesting one now. Visiting the sick, the imprisoned, or visiting in general. But while we could pinpoint these specifics, a still more important question would be, who are the least among us? Because I could imagine that there are persons who would claim that they wouldn't give their food to so and so, but they would give it to this one. And I would always remember the very unfortunate experience I had in a particular church, nameless, in a particular country, nameless, where an individual, nameless, brought his bunch of coconuts to the church harvest, put them down right in the corner of the pew where he sat, and after service, took up the bunch of coconuts and walked right back out with them. And when he was questioned or challenged, his response was, not them, them can't get my coconuts. So even though there is some inclination to want to feed and to share and to take care of, we still want to pick and choose who must get and who must not get. And the point that Jesus makes for us this morning in a very powerful way is that the least are the least. And what it boils down to is that if a person is in need, it matters not what we think or feel about them. If a person is in need, they're in need. And we do our best to meet that need. Full stop. But the self, the ego, pride, and we can identify all sorts of um, factors that, that come into play, that should not come into play, but come into play. And they push us to determine whether she needs it or not. She's not going to get it from me. So somebody else is going to have to come. So we have a challenge from the gospel this morning that says to us, if we are going to be faithful in carrying out God's mission, we don't get the privilege or the luxury or the position of judge to decide who among the least should get and who should not get our service. Because the danger, as Jesus points out, the danger is that when we refuse we are, in fact, refusing to acknowledge our God, to serve our God. And those are Jesus' very specific and direct words. When you didn't do it to them, you did not do it to me. So it doesn't matter how we feel about them. The point is, we have rejected Jesus. We have turned away Jesus. That's the point. So the question again, so who are the least among us? To talk about the hungry, the thirsty, the sick, the naked, the imprisoned. Those sound good. And in a lot of ways, maybe a bit overly used and a bit generic now. So today, in today's world and in our, um, in our own country today, we may have to um, look specifically at persons who are politically active and who associate themselves or align themselves politically. For some of us, 
They are the worst persons to walk the face of God's earth. So politics, correction, partisan politics remains a serious obstacle for many of us. <laughs> because we can see nothing more than the bright red or the bright yellow or the white or whatever color. But to be able to see people's needs irrespective of whatever other shortcomings they may have. To see their needs and to respond to the need. That is where our calling is. That is where the mission of the church lies. It pulls us to the very heart, to the meat of things, as it were. So, why is God's church not as attractive as it should be and can be? Because there are so many on the outside who can identify our shortcomings. Or to put it more specifically, there are those who can identify how we have refused to serve God by refusing to serve them. The least will also include those of other sexual persuasions or convictions. Those who see themselves as not being heterosexuals. We see them as part of the worst. So they can't get our help. Irrespective of how we may feel about certain people and certain practices, the, 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 the reality that we always will have to face is that God made everyone. And just to be clear, God did not make politicians or homosexuals or heterosexuals or thieves or bankers or anybody or any, or any labels or descriptions that we, we like to use. God made people. He made human beings. That is who God made. Everything else is just labels and descriptions that we come up with. And they are labels and descriptions that both intentionally and unintentionally put people in all sorts of different brackets and levels and classes and all sorts of different things. Those come from us. They didn't come from God. God made people. And God has called his church and God is trusting his church to see people and to minister to their needs. That is the challenge. It's a challenge some are willing to face and struggle with and try and work with. And it's a challenge that others have flat out decided not them. We have our thoughts, we have our convictions, and we're going to stick to those. But I pray that somewhere along, the softening of our hearts will take place. And that we can take on the challenge to learn and to grow, to develop in our understanding. And to make those important distinctions and differences. What it means to serve people. What it means to meet people's needs. And to make distinctions between human beings and prisoners or thieves or prostitutes or whatever. 
our calling church, our calling. And this is my constant prayer and hope. We become the church that God wants us to become when we can begin to see. See, vision 2020. See as God wants us to see. Don't see according to our likes and preferences. See as God in Jesus wants us to see. And what that, that does, therefore, it pulls out of us, pulls out of us the understanding that our allegiance is to Christ the King. Not to self, not to make ourselves feel good. Because sometimes when we make ourselves most uncomfortable is when we are pleasing God. Our allegiance has to change. And so for many, as much as we may call Jesus' name, for many our allegiance is still self. Because we still do what pleases self. But when we see as God wants us to see, when our allegiance is to Christ the King, then it means that we are drawn out of ourselves, beyond ourselves, and we can minister, we can carry out God's mission. We can be the church that God wants us to be. And that makes us an attractive church. People will want to be here. See, praise the Lord, we have said Roy and others. People will want to be here. Why? Because we are not looking at the labels. We are not looking at the labels. And for those who may misunderstand, it is not about condoning people's bad actions. But we help people. We help them by first accepting them and now you've heard me use the phrase before come as you are does not mean stay as you are and so it is about taking on that struggle and that journey with others we walk with them we struggle with them in love remembering that as much as we encourage them to be better and to become better we also are striving to become better as well. We ain't there as much as we may think. And Paul gives that warning in Corinthians. He who thinks he standeth, take heed lest he fall. So we are still growing. God's mission must come first. And that mission is best understood and carried out if we can learn to see people and better still learn to see God in people forget the labels they may help maybe just a little bit let them help just a little bit but we turn labels into prison cells we, we, we ensnare people we trap them and we don't let them go even when they are really trying now to do better, we still don't let them go. Oh, she used to. Oh, he used to. Let go. So, we are celebrating the last Sunday the church is here. We are celebrating the reign of Christ. And we are called in our celebration to revisit our understanding of our mission, our calling. We don't get to choose, sisters and brothers. We get to meet the needs. That's what we get to do. Meet the needs. Meet the needs. Meet the needs. God's mission. And that mission requires our allegiance to God and God alone. Remember the words of John the Baptist? I must decrease and he must 
increase. So we must learn to pull back self, more and more, pull back on self and let our love for God, our desire for God, our zeal for God, let that grow, let that grow and let that more and more become the driving force or motive to carry out God's mission. So we thank God for this Sunday and we pray that we will indeed strive as best as we can to be as faithful as we can. Amen. In response to God's word, return, return to our prayer books, page 104, page 104. The Nicene Creed. Shall we stand, please? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen or unseen. We believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe Intercessory prayers form C, page 108, page 108. In our prayers this morning, we indeed give God thanks for sending Jesus into the world. We give God thanks for the reign of Christ, that we can claim him as king of our lives. We thank him for every opportunity to give ourselves to our King in his service. We pray for all churches that bear the title Christ the King. Pray for Christ the King Church in Barbados. Pray for the congregation and clergy there. Pray God's continued blessings upon them and that they would remain faithful servants of the King. In our diocese, we are asked to pray for St. Peter and Holy Trinity here in St. Kitts. Pray for Archdeacon Isaiah and Reverend Joseph. We also pray for St. Paul and St. John with St. Mary Gateway. Pray for Father Darren Carlos and all the people of those congregations. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our brothers and sisters, all who are sick, those at home, those in nursing homes, those who have had to travel for medical attention. Remember to pray for those who have died, especially in recent times. We pray for the families as they continue to mourn and grieve the death of their loved ones. We lift up sisters Perline Elms and uh, Joyce Glassford and their families. We also pray this morning for our brother John Riley as he mourns the death of his brother William Riley. 
We also pray for the soul of our departed sister, Ida David. Pray for the family as they mourn. Uh, sister Ida was a sister in the faith. Uh, she was the person who kept uh, the, the keys for us at St. Barnabas for many, many, many years. We thank God for her sharing with us and for her witness. Lord, in your mercy. We continue now with form C. With all our heart and all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace and welfare of the world, for the witness and work of the church, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops and all ministers of God's word and sacraments, that they may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the Lord's coming. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of the nations and for those in authority among us, that they may serve justice and promote the freedom and dignity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice and oppression, and for all who labor in the cause of human liberation and fulfillment. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, the suffering, the sorrowful, and the dying, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from the ravages of hurricane, earthquake, drought, or flood, and for a just and a proper use of God's creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves and all who confess the name of Christ, that we may show forth the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let us remember to keep our world lifted up and in those, especially those countries where the coronavirus is wreaking havoc. Let us pray for the leaders, national leaders and frontline workers and all in positions of uh, decision making. We pray that they would be bold, they would be brave and they would allow people's lives to have a greater say than economics. Indeed, without people, we can't have an economy. We pray for our leaders that they would have the courage. Pray that God would grant them the grace that they would make the decisions in the best interest of, our, of God's people. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, our prayer. We pray together. O oh Lord, Lord, our God, Accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion on us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O Lord of love. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Page 123, page 123. <clears throat> if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and he will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
Let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ, by the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, and have all been made to drink of the one spirit. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us turn and acknowledge each other as we share peace. receiving the sacrament this morning um, we're inviting you to come all the way up to the communion rail as we would have done in the past okay so we're coming all the way up um, we have the markings okay so we're coming all the way up um, to the railing and as usual we receive the sacrament and we exit on you know whichever side we are sitting on okay so not much of a difference really just coming all the way up to the communion rail Okay, and uh, uh, I know for some of us, the Mass is a bit of a challenge. Now, what should happen is when we approach to receive the sacrament, uh, the, the person, well, once you're directly in front, just pull on your mask, you receive the sacrament straight into your mouth, you bring back up your mask. Okay, um, you shouldn't return to your seat with the sacrament. Okay, so you get it in your mouth as quickly as possible. So the, the practice is when you come up, you pull down your mask, you receive straight to your mouth, mask back up, and you move. Simple. Yes? Yes? Okay, so let's try that, please. Okay, so we are coming all the way up uh, when the time comes, and uh, when we get there, pull down your mask, we receive the sacrament straight to our mouths, replace the mask, and we move on. Okay? All right. I knew that would be easy. Thank you so much. 
Okay, we sing now our offertory hymn number. Oh, sorry, this one is in the bulletin, I think. Oh, we have two. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. So the uh, offertory hymn, the first one is 225 from the Mission Praise. 225. And if we need to use the second one, um, it's printed in the bulletin. Um, Whosoever heareth. So, Mission Praise 225. 225.
page 126, page 126. Prayer B. Father, we offer you all these gifts which you have given us. This bread, this wine, this money. With them, we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become, through your Holy Spirit, a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father Almighty, everlasting God. Page 131 of God the Son. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We sit reverently, or we may kneel, page 137, 137. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you have sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. 
and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you Lord of all presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine we pray you gracious God to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant unite us to your son in his sacrifice that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit in the fullness of time reconcile all things in Christ and make them new and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord the firstborn of all creation the head of the church and the author of our salvation by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honor and glory are yours Almighty Father now and forever Amen On page 144, 144, as our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Lord, I'm not worthy. Lord, I'm not worthy. Lord, I'm not worthy. That thou shouldst come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord God, we praise your people who are you. Be merciful to us and bless us, O God. We gather not our sins, but remember your love for us. Amen. Our hymns for the communion for receiving of communion from the provincial hymnal. Provincial hymnal. We begin with 569. Then we move to the mission praise 697. And then in our bulletins, we have the hymn Take the Name of Jesus with you. So our hymns will follow in that order. Provincial hymnal now 569.
post communion prayer, page 148, page 148. We pray together using the second prayer. The second prayer. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Shall we bow our heads? May God be within us to refresh us, around us to protect us, before us to guide us, and above us to bless us. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We extend once again words of welcome to all of you. Uh, do we have any first time um, worshippers with us this morning? First time worshippers, if you care to stand. Okay. Uh, any celebrations today or during the course of the week? Birthdays, anniversaries. Let us pray. <clears throat> Loving God and Father, we give you thanks and praise always for life, for health and strength, and your many other blessings. This morning, Lord, we are thanking you for your son and daughter, that you have blessed them with another year of life. And as you continue to allow them to grow in age, we pray, dear God, that they would also grow in grace. We pray that they would grow in your peace, in your love, in your goodness. And so we pray and ask your blessings upon them another day, another year. We thank you, Lord. And as they celebrate, we pray that you would bless their families and loved ones so that their joy can be multiplied. We pray that as they press on, they would press on with the understanding and the conviction that their God is with them. They are never alone. And we pray, Lord, for them to grow, grow in their desire to love you more and to serve you more. So Lord, bless them and bless their homes. Keep them always close to you. And as they step out each day, may they step out, Lord, with that desire to make Christ known and to bring glory to your name. Bless them and keep them, we pray, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray with our sister, celebrating 15 years of freedom from breast cancer. clap was for Jesus, eh? <laughs> Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life and for the gift of health. We thank you, Lord, for your daughter, Carolyn. We thank you for spurring her life through the years. We thank you, God, for helping her to be able to reclaim her life, her health. We thank you, Lord, for our physicians who have worked with her through the years. And we pray your blessings upon them all, especially your daughter, Carolyn, oh God, as she celebrates another year we ask that you would keep her close to you, keep her always mindful of your goodness and of your love for her, of your purpose for her life. And so we pray for her to grow in grace, to grow in faith. We pray for her faith to be strengthened again and again. And we pray that daily she would rise up to offer herself to you 
and to allow your will and your purpose to be accomplished in her life. We thank you, Lord, and we pray that you bless her now and bless her always through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay, shall we have the praise God from whom all blessings so, um, flow? celebrating her 64th birthday. 64. And Saturday. And Saturday. Okay, congratulations to all of you. Okay, God bless. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, our notices uh, for this week. Well, you've been hearing all morning. Today is Christ the King Sunday. Last Sunday of the church is here. So I should be able to say happy all year Sunday to all of you. Yeah, it's churches all years. Okay, so of course that means next Sunday is Advent Sunday. Okay, we start over again. So services, um, as we have become accustomed, 6 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. next Sunday. And please note, um, from last year, if those of you can recall, we have shifted um, the color okay so instead of purple we are now using blue for advent or royal blue or anything close to that okay so for those of you who are color conscious and you like to wear colors to suit the seasons for the season of advent the color is blue royal blue okay so we're going to be using blue for advent uh, this evening uh, Sunday 22nd at 6.15, we have another um, episode of Watershed this evening at 6.15 on our Facebook page. Um, and YouTube as well, right? Yeah, Facebook and YouTube. Right. Um, another episode of Watershed. And you'll get to hear a bit from Sister Caroline. So, please tune in. And then at 7 p.m., uh, the radio program Church Calling, Christian Council radio program, 7 p.m. And this evening we have Dr. Patrick Martin as our guest, and he's talking about COVID-19 vaccine. Okay, there's been talks about hopefulness, vaccine seems to be around the corner. Well, we're going to try to get some more information on that. Okay. So um, please tune in and remember it's a call-in program. So if you have a question or comment, you can call in. That's on um, Win FM. Then um, our services remain um, as as is for the, for the week. Tuesday morning and Friday morning at six. Wednesday evening at six thirty. We continue to say thanks and, and we express our appreciation to those who clean and prepare the church for worship. Thank you very much. And we also um, say thanks, or I, well, I said it in the sermon, but um, I'm really proud of us, um, the gifts and the different things we got, uh, we were really able to do, um, like I said, more than the 24 packages, and the packages were very healthy, I call them healthy packages, because they were bigger than those that we gave out before, so, and of course that's all due to you, so thank you for your thoughtfulness, for your sacrifice, and uh, as I indicated, we'll try to see, try and do something uh, for Christmas. So 
um, even now, between now and Christmas, um, if you want to drop off any dry food or canned items at the office, you can do so, or I could bring them to church on any given Sunday. Okay. Nomination forms are still available. I have a few nominations, a few. So uh, remember, this is our last week to bring in nominations. Uh, we have only one name so far for People's Warden. Um, Sister Charisse has been nominated for People's Warden. And we have a few other names for vestry members. So I'll give you everything at the end so you'll know who we are voting for. But if you haven't, if you, there's anyone that you would like to nominate and you haven't spoken with them yet, please do so. This is our last week stretch. Okay, moving in. So forms are at the back. You can get forms. Or during the week, you can collect a form from the office. Okay? We say thank you to a friend of the church for donating some Lysol spray, some cans of Lysol spray, and some Clorox wipes. Okay, so we say thank you very much, quite a few of them. So let's thank our friend for their thoughtfulness. Thank you very much. And starting next Sunday, <clears throat> starting next Sunday, we will be um, taking temperatures at the church door. Okay, um, we should have been doing it before, but anyway, we now have the thermometers. So again, it's just a simple appeal for us to be cooperative. Okay, um, the ushers will be taking the, your temperatures um, when you um, come in, along with sanitizing hands and so on. So please um, be cooperative, work along with the ushers. Uh, if, you are, if you are showing a high temperature, if you're showing a high temperature, which is above 99, um, we are going to very nicely ask you to just take a seat at the back for a few minutes, and then your temperature will be retaken. Okay, if it remains high, okay, in a very nice, the nicest way that we can, okay, in keeping with the COVID, the, the National Committee and the, the guidelines, we have to nicely, nicely, nicely ask you to please um, return home and see your doctor, if not same Sunday afternoon, first thing Monday morning, <laughs> okay? Now, please, I, I know it doesn't sound nice when you talk about turning people away from church, but we also have to be practical and realistic, okay? If you are carrying a temperature over 99, um, we'll ask you to just sit for a few minutes. We'll recheck you. If it's still up there, um, unfortunately, we'll have to ask you to return home. Okay? Do not argue with the ushers. You could vex with me, and you could vex with the COVID committee, the national committee. But those are the guidelines we have to work with. So please, please. We know sometimes if a person is walking in the sun or something like that, your body could get a bit extra hot to uh, walk into church and stuff. So rather than just tell you to, to go home, um, you have to go back home, we'll ask you to just sit, you know, cool off for a little bit, and then we'll check you, okay? So can we be understanding with that, please? Hello? Okay, please. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you for your patient listening as well. We sing now our closing hymn, recessional hymn, in, in, printed in the bulletin. Uh, Hold the fort for I am coming, Jesus signals still. Oh my comrades, printed in the bulletins.
Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Blessed day and a blessed week to all.